I'd have to say this is the most common question I get asked about bringing images from a digital camera into a video editing program. When you take your lovely perfect digital camera image and then bring it into Adobe Premiere or Avid or Liquid Edition, whichever program you prefer to use, you'll get this effect. It looks perfect as a normal image in Photoshop, but when you open it inside the timeline for your editing program, something like this is going to happen. If you're using a PAL system, it gets stretched horizontally, all out of proportion. If you're in the United States and using the NTSC system, it gets squeezed in like this. This is intensely annoying because you just want to bring in the picture so it looks the same as it did in your camera. Now there's a reason why this happens. I'll just set this back. The problem is to do with the shape of the pixels. What do I mean by the shape of the pixels? Well, let's zoom in and have a look really close here. Now these pixels that I've got for this image are square pixels. They are equal on all sides. This is normal for all images that you find off a digital camera and in Photoshop itself. If you were to create a new image in Photoshop, it uses square pixels. That's just the way it does things. But uh, here is the problem. Video does not use square pixels. It uses rectangular or oblong pixels. Now it looks like this. I'm going to go to image pixel aspect ratio this is called and I'm going to switch to the PAL standard and it stretches everything. If I zoom in again so you can have a look at this you can see that my pixels are no longer square they are in fact oblong they're rectangular they're a little bit longer than they are in height that's for PAL. If I switch this to the NTSC system which is used in the United States you can see that they are now the opposite. They're squeezed in. They are taller than they are in width. Very, very annoying. What do we do about this? How do we fix this problem? Well, in many cases, you won't have to do a thing. Most of the newer editing programs will fix the problem themselves. They compensate for the difference in the pixel shapes automatically. Unfortunately, you can't rely on this all the time. So the best thing to do is to prepare your images with the correct pixel aspect ratio before you import it to your video program. So what do we do? Well, I've got my image here with its square pixels. What you need to do is to create an entirely new Photoshop image in the size that you need for video with the correct pixel aspect ratios. To do this, I go to File. From File we choose New. And in the preset list for New, as you can see, I've got PAL DV selected. This is for PAL European Standard Television. For America, you want to use NTSC, or if you want to use the widescreen, depending if you're using widescreen mode, pick widescreen for your format. I'm going to stick, because I'm in Europe, stick to PAL DV1, standard for 3 TV size. Now when you put in this setting, it gives you the correct dimensions for television to this standard. It uses RGB color mode, and most importantly, it sets the pixel aspect ratio to the rectangular size pixels. So I'll say OK you get a warning saying that you're using a pixel aspect ratio correction fine say OK and here I get my nice clean brand new blank Photoshop image with this little message saying it's scaled that's telling me that I'm using the correct pixel aspect ratio if I'm still not sure go to image pixel aspect ratio and it tells you right there with that little tick right next there saying which standards being used now what you need to do to get this image into this new corrected image is you can either drag and drop which I'll do in a moment just to show it or you can do it very precisely by using the file place command I'll just use file place find your image and then click on just drag that over so you can see it then click on place when we use place it's going to try and fit the image in as best it can as you can see it's going edge top edge to top edge but it doesn't actually fit 
the image perfectly. Now this you'll find is normal for images taken with a digital camera. They will not fit exactly. You might find you've got a bit of leftover room on one side or perhaps a bit of leftover room on another, depending on how you've done it. But this does work quite well because it does size it as close as possible. If you want to use up this extra space, just go onto a corner, hold down Shift, and then if you're using a PC, hold down Alt at the same time. So that's Shift and Alt if you're using the Mac that will be shift option and then drag. This will scale the image up equally from the center point until you cover those edges. And once it looks good, press enter and the image is now placed. And as you can see, when I just double click to get the size, look at that, not squeezed, not stretched. It looks absolutely perfect. Okay, I'll just uh, push this one out of the way for the time being. Now the other method that we can use for this is we can drag and drop. Drag and drop is easy and quick, it has a few little fun advantages over the place system which I'll show you in another tutorial for panning and scanning. But the procedure is as follows. Once again we need a new standard for our video. Just for fun I'll change this to NTSC so our American friends watching this can see it done in their format. Say OK. Pixel aspect message, say OK. And there is our nice shiny new NTSC Photoshop file. Now to drag and drop, I might just squeeze this window a little bit so we can see things. I don't have much real estate to play with here, but this will work out pretty well. We need to have our channels palette open. Oh, sorry our layers palette, what am I talking about? Our layers palette open and we simply drag and before we drop it into this new blank Photoshop scaled image, hold down shift. This will guarantee that the image is dropped exactly in the center of this image. There we go. So it's now placed into the center of the image. I'll just stretch this out so we can see the edges and maybe zoom out a little bit. And again, as you can see, it's not perfect. It has missed some of the edges. So you can go to the Move tool and you can drag things around to place it a bit more precisely. Or if you want to scale a thing, this is also pretty good to do, go to the Edit menu and use Free Transform. This will show you the full edging for the image. Now that's actually quite good. So I can go under the edges just like I did before. Use Shift, Alt for PC, Shift, Option for Mac, and I can now squeeze it in, drag it into place, and just scale it out until I get the size and position we want. Just use my keyboard to place it, and then confirm with Enter. So either method is perfectly fine, so you can get this to adjust its size according to the placement and the pixel aspect ratio of the format being used. I'd recommend that you do the tutorial on placing images for panning and scanning that you'll also find in this section of Tutorial Bucket.